All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good to have everybody with us tonight. Um, just going to start on this series probably the uh, next couple weeks. Uh, cover this. It's going to be on identity. Uh, identity as a child of God. This really is one of the teachings that not only set me free, but when I began to discover this, I started getting out of my old mentality of um, knowing how to be a slave to sin to being a son of God or daughter of God. This is about becoming a son or a daughter of God. It's very important. I mean, it's all important. I mean, this for me, and I'm sure for you, because we all, we all have a need to be affirmed by the Father. We all have a need to be validated. We all have a need to have an understanding of who God is as Father so we don't get into a works mentality or a performance mentality so we can grow in knowing God, really knowing God, not just knowing about God. I felt for years that it was like I was tracking God's footprints but didn't know God. And with this, with this uh, teaching, it began to show me um, who I really was in Christ. So I pray that it has the same effect on all of you and everyone watching because this is real, this is real discipleship. This is really where our heart gets fixed, our heart gets healed. We go from living, um, not having an identity, trying to perform to get God's love, trying to perform to get God's acceptance, to just resting as a son or a daughter of God. So let's pray for a moment, okay, So we, before we start here tonight. God, I thank you tonight for this and uh, your word, and I know it's a word in due season for, for us to understand our identity as children of God, and I pray tonight you just help me to say anything I need to and hold back from anything I don't need to, and let this multiply through us to help other people, whether it's on live stream tonight or here. I pray that, Holy Spirit, you'd do a deep investigation of us in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm reminded that when I started this, how many of you know we sometimes, when God really gets into our life, we kind of vapor lock, so to speak. We kind of like, it's hard, to, it's hard to deal with sometimes. And the only way I can describe this is when, uh, you ever been in a motel and, and some kid presses all the buttons on the elevator and it's like you got to stop at every floor? Or maybe you are that kid that did that or whatever. But um, I felt like it was like, the Lord began to deal with me as a new Christian that I'm going to stop at every floor of your life and begin to investigate you and, and find out really what, what makes you tick. I, I, I guess that's an old saying because I asked my daughter the other day, I said, I really want to know what makes you tick. And she thought that was offensive. But I'm like, it's not weird or anything. It's like, what makes you go? What's your, what's your mode? And um, so let's go to John chapter 1, verses 10 and through 12. And... Um, you know, I'm, I don't want to go too fast tonight, but uh, I, want to, I want this to be able to get in us. If this coffee kicks in too much, I, you know, I don't know, hard to tell what you'll get. Just send me a, a letter or something. Anyhow, uh, John, John 1, <laughs> verse 10 to 12, and it says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him, talking about Jesus, the world didn't know him. There's many in the church that don't know him. They know about him, but they don't know him. And he came to his own, and his own did not receive him, talking about Israel, talking about the children of Israel. But then he says, verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right, he gave you the right to become children of God. That word right is also privilege. God gave you the great privilege of becoming a child of God, Father God, to where you can get the love and the affirmation you need to be loved back to life. Praise God. It's such a beautiful thing. The spirit of adoption in the Bible is such a beautiful thing that God adopted us out of all the people on the earth. He adopts his people. This one thing should make people want to serve God. It really should. If you understood this one truth from the Bible, it should make you want to just get closer to God. And he says, so he gave us the right to become the children of God. So if you've right, you got your Bible, underline that. You've got a right or a privilege to become a child of God. No matter what past you have, God can bring you through that. He puts the lonely in families. He, he screws our head back on straight. He, he gives us heart surgery. He begins to deal with us 
till we understand what a son or a daughter is. If you, ne- if you didn't have a mom or dad that had a mom and dad that showed them the father's love, they didn't show you it. You, you didn't know how to become a son or a daughter because you had to perform to get love. So if your parents didn't understand the father's love, they didn't know what it was like to be a son or a daughter. They didn't teach you what it was like to be a son or a daughter. So you realize God breaks the chain. When he comes into your life and you begin to know him, he starts to break the chain to help you get out of that performance mentality. Ladies, he helps us feel secure. Number one need of a lady is security. Number one need of a man is affirmation. He, God does this. I know it's weird, but God's father and mother of us. <laughs> He's our parents. <laughs> And, and, and when we talk about sons, if I ever just refer to sons, he's talking about sons and daughters in these scriptures. But God loves us, and when we get to know him, we start to, control gets broke off of us. We quit having to control everything. We quit having as much stress. We begin to rest in who God is. I'm a son. I don't have to work to be that. I am. He gave me the right or the privilege to be a son. You're a daughter. You don't have to work to be that. You can even be in a relationship right now where you feel like you've got to earn yourself. You've got to earn um, your way to God. It's not right. You may, you may feel, I mean, I know this tramps on our toes sometimes, but how many know good preaching has got to tramp on our toes sometimes? Because do you know that in surgery they've got to cut you to fix you? And so even though there's anesthetic, I woke up before with the not having the anesthetic. That's painful. But still, the ultimate goal is they couldn't stop the surgery. You had to keep going because the ultimate goal was to get me fixed. That's the way God will fix us. And sometimes that there's pain, but God does have anesthetic. It's called Holy Spirit. He's our anesthetic. So, so he said, he gave you the right to become the children of God to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You were born, you're not an accident. No matter what's been told to you, you're not a mistake, you're not an accident, you're not worthless, you're, you're not somebody that God says you're no good, or why can't you be like your brother, or why can't you be like your sister over there, why can't you be like that pastor, Mike, at the other church? God doesn't do that. My, my significance and my validation is in being a son of God. And, and, and again, this teaching will set you free if you, if you get it. I've learned that we all, need, um, we all need discipled to become children of God. Whether you came from a good home or not. Whether you're male or female. Some of us need more work than others. Okay, but we all need work. Romans 3.23 says... We've all sinned and come short of the mark, the glory of God. We've all sinned and come short. So we all need work. Say, we all need work. We all need work. And we all need to learn to walk as children of God, to work as children of God, to rest as children of God, to be sons and daughters of God, and to be mothers and fathers that are God's children. To teach our children to be sons and daughters of God through a healthy relationship. Through us getting fixed, I always say, You know, if we can reach a child, you don't have to repair an adult. But if we get fixed, we're going to break the chain for our children. I started, when I first became a father to Tabitha, I found myself saying stuff to her that I never said, I said I would never say. But it came out of me. And it shocked me. Because it was from my upbringing. And God had to break that off of me to show me I don't need to say that stuff to manipulate or control or to change her behavior taught me how to simply discipline in love not manipulate to get my way not say if you don't hug me I'll hug your sister or if you don't do what I want I'll get some other kid down the street to do what I want no don't have to use any of that manipulation but just be able to discipline in love no means no yes means yes right not 10 times if you do that 10 more times I'm going to discipline you (laughs) but show them that you mean what you say this is not parenting class, so I'll get off of this tonight. But we, we all were slaves to sin. You don't have to have been a drug addict. We were all slaves to sin. 
If you're not serving Christ tonight, you are a slave to sin. Worse, you're a slave to self. And you are a slave to look for significance somewhere other than God. Because we all want significance. We all want validated. So we're going to get it legally or illegally. We're all going to get loved. Every person in here needs 12 affirmations a day. I never knew that you could affirm yourself if you were a son or daughter of God. I never knew that God affirms you all the way through here. You can find affirmations. There's over 700 affirmations in the Bible about you that you can read over yourself, and that's legal. Because the Word of God's for you. And God will affirm you. And if nobody affirms you, you can affirm yourself. And that way you don't have to be a big bundle of emotions. Amen? I was that way for years. I looked for significance. I wanted a pat on the back. I found out that being the best at sports still does, didn't get me the, the significance that I wanted. There's only somebody better. It didn't get me the affirmation that I wanted. So I started meeting it illegally as a teenager, drinking, girls, you know, smoking pot, going to harder drugs, doing all those things, trying to get my needs met. It wasn't legal. It was making me more enslaved. More shame, more guilt, more bondage, big snowball. Mike feel more worthless and more worthless and more worthless because Mike was never taught how to be a son. And then I had kids. And it's scary. Because how many of you know if you, if you parent out of fear... Your kids are in trouble because they don't need a drill sergeant. They need a dad. They need a mom. They don't need somebody. The more you know that you can yell at somebody, I've experienced this. You can be yelled at so much you shut down. You can smile at people yelling at you because you can get yelled at so much you can make an inner vow that says, nobody's ever going to make me upset like that again. And so you just, they make good candidates for the military, <laughs> right? But the military don't like smiling, right? So, but anyhow, we're all slaves to sin, and if our identity gets wrapped up in us and not Christ, we're never going to get set free. We go through a process to become sons or daughters of God. Um, so I said about the 12 affirmations, and we can get them, uh, we can get them through God, through the Word through other people, we need, we all want one thing as a kid. We want to run to the Father and jump in his lap when we fail, and we want him to say, I love you like you are. We can get lots of people to cheer us on when we're in victory. Lots of people to give us praise when we're in victory. But when we need our Father is when everybody's booing us and when life's booing us and when we're booing ourselves, Jerk, Mike, you made a mistake again. Here you are. You just screwed up everything again. Here you are. That's when you need your Father. You need your Father to say, hey, I love you just like you are. Best thing my grandfather ever did for me is when he seen me, he stretched out his arms like this, Michael, my boy, best thing he ever did. When I saw him, when he died, it crushed me. It's one of the things that led me to Christ. But when he did that, it it made my heart leap. We need the Father's embrace. 93% of communication is tone and body language. How many of us have ever gotten the look growing up? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, if you got it. You know what the look is? Boy. Yeah. You know what it was? I never I never had to be I never had to get corporal punishment as much because the look scared me enough. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what that meant. We get home, boy, or outside. (laughs) 
I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go ape on you here. <laughs> but, but, but later on, <laughs> you know what the look means. <clears throat> you, know what, you know what it's like to grow up with a look that you'd wish they hit you. Because tone and body language hurts. We wonder why the house is all up in the air and the roof's like, the roof's this far off of the stud walls inside. Because there's yelling going on in our house, it makes the kids feel insecure. I don't care how much you hug them afterwards. I don't care how much, your actions speak louder to them. You're screaming and hollering and they, they shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink and they get afraid, and i got to protect myself, and what if mom and dad, and what if mom and dad, and they may split up tomorrow, and, and, and I don't want them fighting, and they back up, and they begin to get independent of you. You begin to lose your weight as a mother or father because you're breaking their spirit as a son or a daughter. Generational screaming is not a blessing. It's not. It makes people feel insecure. It makes, them, it makes them feel, you know, really scared. I, you, can, I, you can talk to a lot of people. <clears throat> I have a friend that does prison ministry. And he can tell you that there'll be kids that know the exact point where they shut their parents off. Because they got tired of feeling insecure. You know, literally. Tired of, tired of either wetting the bed or, or you, know, you know what I mean, like being so scared. They just got so tired of it, they made an inner vow. You guys just, <laughs> y'all are freaks. I love you. You're my mom. You're my dad. But I don't want to be like you. I don't know. If, if this is what marriage is like, no says I. I don't want that. And, and so, we, so you say, well, is there hope for me? Sure there is. Because you've got a good father. You've got a good God that will take you from being a slave to being a son or a daughter no matter where you've come from. A father can love you. How many of you know that, that you can know your parents can love you, but you still didn't get what you needed? They love you. They did the best they could do. I preached a message one time that a roof is not a relationship. We had a whole generation of people that grew up that says, if I put a roof over your head, I've provided all you need. But a roof is not a relationship. A lot of men just think we can just provide material things, but it's not a relationship. And we don't understand when our kids go crazy because we give them everything. They, they, we work so they can have a roof over their head. We work so they can have a bunch of stuff, but they're still broken because what they need was a relationship. It'd be better if you, you, know, if you spent some time just developing that relationship than anything you can do. Amen? So a father can love you, but if you never felt like a son... Um, it, it, it doesn't do the trick. It makes you a survivor. You survive childhood. Surviving makes you independent of love. You put up a wall like I'm never going to get it. But then when you meet Jesus, he starts to break through those walls. I'm talking not meet church, meet Jesus. Taste the Lord, see that he is good. He gets in right in the middle of your mess and your wreck, and you can, you can like not have the right clothes on in front of Jesus. You can not have the right look on your face in front of Jesus. You can not have the right tone or the body language or all that in front of Jesus. You can feel like a total mess up and a total jerk in front of Jesus, and he still just comes in and says, I love you just like you are, but too much to leave you the way you are. So let's start changing. Let's start becoming sons and daughters instead of slaves. And that's the best message I could give a new convert is God offers you that you could start becoming a son or a daughter instead of a slave. I hope that sounds appetizing if you're watching. That, that's what you want because that's what we're aiming for, okay? Um, being a survivor won't heal you. It makes you strong. It makes you able to get through, but it doesn't heal you. Um, Romans 8, 18 to 23 I'm just going to read that real quick. Romans 8, 18 to 23. And it's a cry for Father God to love us. He says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 
For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For creation, creation was subject to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. There's a freedom in being a child of God. A freedom, not a condemnation, not a shame, not a guilt, not a I don't feel good enough. There's a freedom. I always said, I didn't know what it was like much about sin before I saved, but I know what it's like to be bound. And I know what it's like now to be free. Free is better. I'll give you a hint, be free. And so if we look at this, that... um, For we know, verse 22, that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves waiting for the redemption of our body. So this is a cry for the Father. This is a cry for Father God. Um, Pain in our life seeks comfort. We, we, we have a whole generation, a society that is numbing themselves because of pain. It's not as much the, the pain in our body as the pain that's inside, the soul pain. That we, and how many of you know soul pain leads to body pain? You can get so upset that you begin to have problems with your stomach and you begin to have problems with your, your joints and you get, begin to have problems with your heart because of hurts and so pain seeks comfort it'll seek drugs sex alcohol i mean don't let anybody fool you it can be it can be mint chocolate chip too ice cream got one hand besides my amen how many know it can be ice cream how many be gallons of ice cream it this, we all want the father to come and invite us onto his lap and that's what he does and that's the great story of the prodigal son. It's why I love it so much, because the father sees the prodigal far off, and he tells the people, go kill the fatted calf. We're going to have a party. You know, we've been praying the prodigals will come home. Guess what? Day before yesterday, I had a prodigal call me. Clear out of the blue. Just clear out of the blue. And he said, I've, I've messed up my life enough. I need to talk to you. You know, I want to do what's right. I want, to, I want to turn. I want to change. I'm like, praise God. This is just prophecy fulfilled. This is what God's doing. It's, it's time. The world's sick of the world. <laughs> They're sick of the world. They're slaves. They're slaves to the nine to five or whatever. They're just slaves. And they want free. Jesus offers that freedom. Glory to God. Can I go a little bit more? I mean, I feel like I just got started. The Lord's just moving here, but it's not the coffee. It's the Holy Spirit. Galatians 4, and this is something I want you to read, because uh, read Galatians 4, 5, and 6 in the next few weeks, because these are such good verses on becoming a son or a daughter. They really are, or walking in the spirit versus walking in the flesh. And we need help sometimes seeing how much we're bound up, right? It says, so, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law in slavery, that we might receive the adoption as sons and daughters of God. Uh, They made shirts, adoption is the gospel. It's true. The spirit of adoption of God is the gospel. He adopted us out of the slave market of sin. Satan's got a big slave market. You talk about a trafficker, he's a diabolical trafficker. He is. And he said that in the fullness of time, get this, God sent forth his son. Here's what I want to say to you tonight. Isn't it the fullness of time you become a son or a daughter? That word, fullness of time, literally means time is pregnant. And it has to get bring forth. Just like a, a baby from the womb. Isn't it time? Isn't this your time? I say it is your time. What better time in your life than to begin to become a son or a daughter of God, then now. Well, I'm too old. No, you're not. Well, I've messed up too much. No, you haven't. Well, I've got too much shame and too much guilt. 
I don't buy it. Because he who the Son sets free is free. And you're a candidate. So he said in verse 6, And because you are sons or daughters, God sent forth his Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which means Daddy God. Your Spirit cries out, Daddy God, I need you. That's intimate. That's an intimate term. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. In the name of Jesus. You're no longer a slave, but you're a son or a daughter of God. Get that. Tell stress to go. Right? Tell the enemy to get lost. Tell your giant to move. Your God's bigger than him. Because you're, you're no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son or a daughter, then you are an heir of God through Christ. You got an inheritance. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us. Right? Get this picture. Same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us. If it is, then can he raise you out of bed in the morning? Can he raise you up out of whatever you go through? Any defeat? Any divorce? Any bad time? Any mistake? Any failure? Any sin? He can bring you up out of it. It gets me excited. So, <clears throat> verse 8. But then, indeed, when you did not know God... You served those which by nature are not gods. You served, you served sin trying to find out you want the love that you could get, but you just remained a slave. Isn't it something how something can be a blessing? You, you buy something and make you feel good that day, and then somebody runs into it, and it don't feel too good the next day. Or somebody steal it, or it rusts, or whatever. The car that was such a blessing four years ago, now it's all rusted up from salt. It's not such a blessing anymore, is it? You know, it, it, it's not. He says, you serve those which by nature are not gods, but now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, intimacy, father with a son or a daughter, now that you know, how is it? This is Paul's problem. The Galatians kept drifting back into the old, just like us. We do it too. We start drifting back into being led by our mind instead of our spirit. We drift back into being led by a slave mentality instead of a son or a daughter mentality. He said, um, to which you desire again to be in bondage. No, we don't. But bondage is comfortable. Bondage is comfortable. I look at it like a dog in a kennel, you know, when it's in there so much. Or a dog on a chain. It's there so much, it doesn't know freedom. It feels safer back in there. Safer chained back up. That's the way we are by nature, all of us. We, when we get afraid, we want to back up into bondage. We want a comfortable jail cell. We want a padded cell. <laughs> That's what we want. It's not what we really want, but it's what feels normal. It's more normal to us. You with me? Galatians 5.1, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God wants to break the chains of spiritual slavery off the church. He wants to break the chains of slavery off of your heart. Off of your mind. This is very interesting. This, this illumination of scripture really set me free. And it's in Matthew 26 and 39. It's how, how we learn to relate to the Father. Matthew 26, 39. And it's talking about Jesus here in the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm sure it's familiar to many of you. It says here that Jesus went a little further, farther, and he fell on his face, and he prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Okay? I want you to see something the Lord showed me here. Jesus came to the Father, showing us what it's like to come based on humanity 
God wrapped himself in flesh in Jesus became a man, just like us, and he overcame as a man or woman by the Holy Spirit. When Jesus goes into the garden, he's showing us a picture of what we're like when we start to approach the Father. He goes to the Father here, and he says, you know, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me, because how many of you know that going to the cross was not going to get him affirmation from men? They were crucifying him because they hated him. He felt no significance. This is, you got to learn this. I mean, and we're all varying degrees of this. But you got to learn this if you're ever going to be truly free. You can't get your significance from what you do. You get your significance when you realize who you are. A son or a daughter. If it's in what you do, you're always going to be taken out by your emotions. Because when you don't get the attaboy, when you don't get the girl, you're always going to back up into bondage. But when you become a son or a daughter, listen, Jesus showed us here that he said, okay, he was real. If it's possible, let it pass. Okay, that's us and our humanity. Here's where the spirit kicked in. And he led by the spirit. He says, nevertheless, not as I will but as you will. In other words, I don't need my significance in being a hero down here. I get my significance because you're my father. And you're really the only significance I need. Isn't that good? It's just really freeing. Because then we don't have to long to do something great. We just are. We just are, and we can't, we cannot get messed up as long as it's about him. Where Christianity in America has messed up the last 20 years, it's become about the church and not about him. It's the consumer mindset is it's all about us. It's if we feel good, if we feel right, if we're getting what we need and we're forgetting, is God getting what he needs? That's the gospel, you know, because it's about him. Isn't that good? I hope that's as good for you as it is for me, but so Jesus came based on him, but he came to the end of himself. So I wrote this. If I'm a husband or a father or an employee or a minister out of a slave mentality, then it's all about me, how I feel about it, how you all make me feel when I preach, how you make me feel as I pastor you. It, a slave mentality, it becomes all about you. I'll be honest with you. This is the way I was for many years. I ministered out of an unmet need. I was ministering out of a slavery mentality. Fact. I ministered. When I feel like I performed good on a Sunday, I had a good day. When I feel like I performed bad, I had a bad day. Because my, I was moving out of a slavery mentality. It wasn't just about pleasing the Father. It was just about knowing that all these, all these externals happened that I thought should happen. That's a slavery mentality of what people are thinking about you, what they're saying about you, what they're doing. It's, it's, it's easier said than done, but the fact is, it's all about how it affects me, how much I feel good about it, how much emotional support and comfort I get from it, or even how significant it makes me feel. But a son or a daughter just lives to please the father. Like when you ask yourself at the end of the day, was I obedient to God? If yes, you're a success. Whew. It takes the weight off. We're a success because we follow God. Joshua 1, 8, 9. Obedience to God is good success. Good success. So a son or a daughter lives to please the father. Life becomes easier. And it's about God and not what others feel or think about us. It's mind-blowing. This breaks chains off of us, off of our life, because we go from being led by self, our mind, will, and emotions, or being led by Satan to being led by God. Because we're a son or a daughter. We listen to God. I'm listening to my father. Satan, I'm not listening to what you say about me. Because you're not my God. 
you're not my father. When my kids were in elementary school, nobody could come up to them and say, how do you know Mike is your father? They look at him like, because he's my father. Like, they didn't need to get a birth certificate out. They didn't need a piece of paper. They didn't need a law to say I was our father. They knew that I was their father. As a child of God, we need to be the same way when the enemy comes knocking on our door to try to intimidate us and talk junk to us. We need to understand, listen, I'm a child of God. You, you, you don't even know who you're messing with. You must not, or I don't. One of us don't, because you're messing with me, and I'm a child of God. And you've seen what Jesus did. Satan, you've seen what Jesus did. He defeated you. And so I have the same right as a son or a daughter of God. He said he gave us authority over the enemy. But we forget, don't we? So if we understand this, it breaks the chains um, off of us, and we, we go to being led by the Spirit of God. It's why Paul said in Galatians 2.20, he said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Listen, I, I lived for affirmation and significance for so many years, knowingly or unknowingly. Um, but I began to see that I had a problem that I kept again and again and again being led by my flesh and not being led by the Spirit. Dr. John, my spiritual father, he taught me this. He said, your damaged emotions and your unrenewed mind is like a bushel basket that you put over your light. Your, your damaged emotions and your unrenewed mind is like putting a bushel basket over your life. To be a healthy leader... You have to live from the inside out where your spirit rules your soul and your soul doesn't rule your spirit. If your emotions are ruling your spirit, we, we may need help getting a further revelation of the Father's love. I mean, sometimes we need help. It's all right to ask for help because we can get it. But if we, if we live over and over again, week after week, in our our emotions were, were, are ruling our spirit. We need help to break that because the, we're getting a bushel basket over our light. Amen. We, we get established in our God-given identity. The spirit rules. How many know that takes work? The biggest work, though, it takes is just walking with God every day. You know what I think the work is? Giving up control. We just like to take care of it. We want to control. Now, I know y'all just looking at me uh, like a mule eating briars, but it's okay. Um, we just, we understand. I understand. I can just speak for myself, my own experience. We just, we just when we grow up doing it by ourselves, there's the process. It's hard to let go. It is hard to let go. It is hard to trust. That's a fact. I'm not trying to trample on anybody's trust, but I'm just saying you can trust God. He's faithful. He's faithful. Religion may let you down, but God will never let you down. The Father will never let you down. The Father's always ready to kill the fatted calf every day. And he's saying, there's my son. I think, I honestly believe God celebrates every little revelation we get. Like that, that illumination I got that blew my mind, I think God celebrates that. He doesn't say, you know, Mike, I've been waiting 24 years for you to get that. All right? I, lo I love what Mark Hankins always says. God showed me something one time in about 20 years. <laughs> he showed me stuff that's taken 30 years. And that's, that's the other thing about God. I, the older I get, the more I realize time don't mean nothing to God. He does not care. Time is nothing to him. We've got, we're talking about, we're thinking, okay, wow, what am I going to do this summer? And he's thinking, where are you going to be 100 years from now? Are you going to be in eternity with him? 
You know, wh wh where are you going to be? Or are you going to be freer next year than you were this year? That's my goal. Because I realize if I get freer, you're going to get freer. And if you get freer, the people around you are going to get freer. And if your children get freer, their children will be freer. Right? And it, even when we're gone, our great-grandchildren will be free because we decided to get free. And isn't it worth it? It really is worth it to know that our descendants can be free. Because there was a bald-headed man back there somewhere, you know, about 120 years ago, that decided he was going to get free and be a son. And it's so amazing to me how the people that use prodigals that come home a lot of times, they've got this Christian in their family somewhere. I got this grandma, or I got this, it's somebody back there that decided they were going to get free and believe God's word that even though people might hate them when they're growing up, when they get older and find God, they're so thankful. My grandmother, my grandmother was a Christian that blessed me before she died. Man, I just, I stayed away from her, from her when I was in trouble. She could smell, that woman could smell. She said, I smell marijuana. You could be clear down on the front porch outside of her house. You'd be up there on the balcony. I smell marijuana. I didn't know she knew what marijuana was. I should ask her if she smoked it. That's probably, if I'd been smart aleck enough like I was, I probably said that. But, but, you know, she could, she would just, but you know what? Before she died, she said, she said in front of my family, she said, he's going to mount to something. I never forgot. She blessed me. Now I'll get to see her in heaven. You know, somewhere in that line, there's a person. You be that person. Be willing to lay down. The Bible says no greater love, there's no greater love than this than a person would lay down their life for their friends. If we have to lay down our control to become a son or a daughter now so that it pays dividends generations behind us, it's worth it. Because honestly, all, we got this one life to live. And then we're going into eternity. It's worth it to do the work to, to rest. Some of you have been working and laboring. You're watching. I can't see you. But you've been working and laboring your whole life as a slave. I can tell you, you need to try it as a son or a daughter. You need to try life God's way. Not just get saved, but become a son or a daughter. Go the whole, go the whole, go the whole way in. Amen? I'm going to stop with this. John 17, 3 says, To know him is eternal life. Uh, God showed me this in about 32 years. The more we get to know God, through talking to Him, through praying, the more life we live with Him, the more freedom we get. And it's a daily, it's a daily thing. And we go from being a slave to our mind, will, and emotions to being a son of God or a daughter of God. I explain this, um, you know, I use gasoline as an illustration. Um, but getting the residue of the slavery off of us is just like getting gas off our hands when we, get, when we pump gas in our car and it spills. When you, the first time you wash your hands, it doesn't just come off. You know, you can wash them again and again, and maybe you can put some lemon juice on or whatever, or put something else on it to take that. But that, that gas stays in your pores. It, it, it soaks right in. The slavery that we've all come out of we're set free in our spirit right away. When you're saved, you're set free in your spirit right away, but we're three parts. And so in our mind, will, and emotions, there's still a residue of slavery. So the mind has to be renewed to get the residue off. So we just keep, we just keep getting in here. Like teachings like tonight, you need to go over this again. This is available right on, on the internet, you can go and, and get, uh, read, listen to this. I always listen to a message seven or eight times when it's feeding me and get out what I can get out of it. But you go over this again and it starts to, it's just like washing your hands to get the gas off. You just begin to get the residue. You can't get it in one time. People that just think, well, I just, I go to church on Sunday and just check that box that I went to church. That don't work. <laughs> it's about a relationship. So I say, take this. Is this good tonight? Y'all get this? I hope you get it. This set me free. I'm, I'm sharing it with you because 
this is setting me free. It has set me free, and it will set me free. I go back to this because I understand that there's still more work for, to be done when I start backing up, like just like the Galatian church, I start backing up into bondage. Feeling blah. Feeling like, I've got to do something. i got to do something. Mike, what are you going to do? you got to do something. There's a deadline. There's a deadline. Don't you know there's a deadline? There's a deadline. You know, this got to be fixed now or yesterday. And it's like you get you getting all that, and really another day comes and goes, and all you've just been is stress, 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 when you can let go. Amen? Man, if the, the spirit of adoption is the gospel, you're adopted. You're children of God. You're watching. If you're, you become a Christian, knowing him is eternal life. It, it makes you come alive. Can we... Pray that we come alive to the purposes of God in our life. Get this, newsflash. You don't have to be anything tonight. You don't have to be another person tonight. He loves you. He loves you. He's saying, come home after church. Wait for everybody to go to bed and crawl up in my lap and sit with me. And let me tell you who you are as a son or a daughter. It's okay. He's got it. God's got a big lap, big arms. He'll hug us. Right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the, the word. The word makes us free. Thank you for identity in Christ. Thank you for us going from slaves to sons and daughters. God, I pray your, your, just your Holy Spirit would just move. Go out to whoever listens to this and to everyone here tonight and set them free. Set them free, Lord. I bind all condemnation and guilt and shame that people's already dealing with. And I pray just for freedom. Just for freedom as sons and daughters of God. And Lord, I, I give you the praise. Lord, I, I just give you praise because this teaching, I know, Lord, it goes a long way when we've been a slave for so long. And so, Father, I thank you for reaching to the depths of people's hearts tonight. I pray it really makes sense. I pray it really moves on people. And I pray, God, I believe you to do the work, and the word won't return void. In Jesus' name, amen.